Hello guys, welcome to the channel Raul Automation Studio. So yeah guys, in my last videos, I have explained about different concepts in Selenium, like how you can create a Chrome driver class and object after that you can launch the browser and how you can navigate to the URL, how you can maximize, minimize the window, how you can close the open browser by the Selenium. So we have explained, I have explained like different concept in it. So, but now this is the time that I should be explaining about the locators in Selenium because this is very important going forward as we have to locate the web element on the screen and after that we have to perform some actions on the web elements. Only after that we can understand the more concept in Selenium going forward. So for that, first of all, we have to understand what is the locator, what are different types of locator in Selenium, which one is the best way how you can locate the web element in a selenium so first of all let's see what exactly i am talking about <clears throat> so guys this is a website <clears throat> normal website so manually what you will do after launching a url and it's properly loaded in the website so what you will do exactly suppose you are doing the click action on a sign in icon right guys after that suppose you already have the account in it and what you will do you will fill the details in it, right guys? So like you will enter the username and password and after that, like you will click on the sign in, right guys? So how exactly same thing you can do with the help of a Selenium? That thing we are doing with the manual step. Now it is the time how you will do with the automation. So in the automation or with the help of a Selenium, you have to first of all, locate this web element everything see first of all this is an html page so in the html page every every element you know every element is known as a html tag so this is an html tag so this is a text box so this will be having one html tag so in the same way other elements on the web page also will be html tag so to interact with the HTML element, first of all, you have to locate that particular HTML tag, right? Guys, suppose if you want to work on email address. So in that case, you have to first locate the email address input HTML tag, right guys? So that's to locating a particular HTML tag is called as a locators, locators in a selenium guys so in the similar way if you want to work if you want to enter the value for password so you have to locate this particular text box right guys so if you want to click on a sign in button so you have to locate this particular html tag for it once you will locate this particular tag only after that you can perform some actions so actions means to say if you want to click on it if you want to send some values in it if you want to get the text from it, like if you want to get the authentication value, so what is the header of it? So in that case, you, you can get, first of all, you have to locate this element. And after that, after locating, we have to perform the action, which action you want to perform it. Based on that, after that, you will be applying the different validations as per the test case, like uh, the header title is coming proper or not. It should be authorization. So it is either coming authorization or authentication like that. So, I mean, this kind of validation that you will be definitely verify after that based on the test, your test case. So let's see guys, what is the locator? So I have explained to you what is the locator. So locator is particularly locating a HTML tag in your web page, in your HTML page, or you can say in your DOM, right guys? Now let's see what are different locators they have provided in a Selenium. So in the Selenium guys, there are basically eight eight locators are there in the selenium guys so we will be talking about one by one and i will show you the example also how you can write the different locators in selenium and how you can perform the action on the locators okay guys so first of all there are eight locators in selenium if the interview question they will ask you what are different locators in the selenium so you have to tell there are total eight locators in a selenium and the different locators are first of all id is there after that name is there class name is one of the locator tag name xpath link text 
partial link text and the CSS selector. So these are total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So total eight, eight locators are there guys. So one by one, we will be discussing about the meaning of the locator and how you can use and how you can locate it in the application. So we'll do it by one by one. First of all, we will be starting with the link text, right guys? So like in the example, like in the example, you can see this is a sign in. First of all, like to come on the sign in page, you have to click on the sign in anchor tab or sign in link, right guys? So this is a link. So if there is a link and you want to click on that particular link, so based on the text, you can click on it. So based on that, you can click on it. So first of all, guys, you have to inspect the element on the action, on the element, you want to perform the action, just what you have to do, right click on it and click on inspect. Once you will click on inspect, the perspective HTML tags, you can see this is an anchor tag for the HTML page, right guys? I will just zoom it, right? So you can see it. So this is an anchor tag for the sign in, right guys? So you have to locate this particular HTML tag. So our first method, first way to locate an element in a Selenium is link text. So this is a link, this is a link, anchor link. So what is the text? Text is sign in. So you can use a sign in link, sign in text for the partial link. So let's try in the Eclipse tool and I will show you practically how you can do it. So we will be doing one by one, right guys? So first of all, create a Java class. And we will be giving the name for locators, right? We will be adding the main method in it. Just click on finish. And uh, we already have the code for uh, launching a browser. So I will be adding it. So guys, this is a code where I'm setting the path for the set property uh, for the Chrome browser, this Chrome driver.exe file. And after that time, I'm creating a class for Chrome driver and storing in a web driver interface variable. And after the successful opening of the browser, I'm loading a particular URL that it, it URL can be your application URL or it can be any external URL. And after that, I'm just maximizing. We can do the maximize before also. So like that, I'm just adding a two second of delay. So this delay, this is a uh, like thread dot slip. So thread dot slip will throw an exception. So you have to declare in your variable. I mean, means to say in the method, in the method declaration, you have to add it, right guys. And this is our static width. Thread dot slip is static width. So it will wait for two seconds for you. So let's load this particular URL first of all. And uh, I mean, we will be adding in our driver dot get, right? So this is the URL. So where we will be showing the examples for you. So after that guys, what you have to do? So you have to locate the web element for the sign in link. So you have to use driver dot find elements guys there are two method one is find element another one is find element so find elements also i will explain first we will be see the find element so find element by dot so we are going to use a link text first of all i will show you all the eight methods guys in the selenium so you can see by dot first method is class name like class name css selector id link text name partial link text tag name x paths so if you will count one two three four five six seven eight so total there are eight ways in the selenium that you can locate a web element right guys so we will be seeing one by one so first we will check with the link text so if you will see this link text what it is explaining so it is saying the link text is the exact text to be matched against. So we have to pass that particular text and it will return a by which locate a element by the exact text it displays. So we have to pass the exact text with 
you want to locate the element so we want to locate the element with the name of sign in right guys so you can see this is sign in and we are locating with the help of sign in so this is the first way with the link text we have to and we have to do a click on it so after locating it what actually will perform manually you will click on it so in the similar way in the selenium you have to write down dot click method guys just a minute right guys so this is the way that you have to perform the action on it this is a click method that you have to use so let's try to run this and see if uh, this is working fine or not so what you have to do you have to just right click on it and do run as java application guys so this is a link text based on the link based on the link value we are clicking on it so this is a one way there are total eight ways to locate a web element i will show you one by one every one so now it has to click on the sign in link and let's see you can see guys it has clicked on the sign in link and the sign in page is open for us to work on further so now let's see for the another one so we have seen like link text we have seen next we will be checking with the id so basically id is an attribute id is an attribute for the html tag based on that you can locate a web element so how you can do it guys so we will be doing suppose uh, we have to click on sign in page first of all and we are on sign in page now so for that first of all if you are already registered and what you will do you will enter the email address after that you will enter the password and then you will click on sign in so let's try to locate this email address so what you have to do right click on it click on inspect and you can see this tag is opened in our html dom so this is the tag for our email address text box guys for this you have to locate the text box you don't have to locate for email address label this is a label and this is a text box so this text box is corresponding to the email address similar way this text box is correspondence with the password so you have to locate that particular element on which you have to perform the action so in this we have to perform the action in the text box so you have to locate the text box only you don't have to locate the label of the text box right guys so you have to locate it the text box so this is the html tag this is an input tag for the text box of email address so you can see guys in this html tag it is having different property it is having class property it is having some one attribute data validate it is having type as a text id is email name is also email so we can locate this element based on the id value you can see guys this is having an id as a property and this is the value for it so we are locating this particular wherever you can see id it should be unique guys it should be unique if it will not be unique always it will select the first value for you okay so it should be unique id so in that case email is a unique id and so we can locate this particular text box with the help of id so how you can do it so for that you have to do driver dot find element by dot id you have to use the method id and in the id it is taking a string value so just to pass the string value and what is value so value is email so what is the value of id email right you have seen you have seen with the value right so email is the value for our id so you have to pass as email and once you have located the element so we have located the element for the text box now what you have to do you have to enter the email address in it so to send a text which method you have to use you have to send keys is the method you have to use 
and you have to enter the email address. Suppose anything is there, we have to pass like this, right guys? So this is locating the email address with the help of a ID locator and it is sending the value in it. Now let's try to run the test case now. Run as a Java application. So first we have covered link text. Second is ID, right guys? So let's see. It should enter the email address in that particular email text box. So it has clicked on the sign in link and uh, it will load the page. And you can see guys, this email address, the value which have, we have entered, it has filled with this particular value, right? So that we are doing in the manual and same thing is happening in the automation with the help of locators. So this is the second way guys. Now let's discuss about the third way. So just copy this line. We will be commenting out this line for this username. And this time we will be using some different value. So we have covered link text. We have covered ID. Now let's try to use the name. So how you can locate the element with the help of a name. So you can see guys, this attribute, this particular tag is having the name also. Name is also the same email. So we can locate this particular element with the help of a name attribute. So how you can do it? So everything is same, rest of the thing is same, value is also same for the name, just you have to change the way. So how to do? You have to use by.name. You can see one method is there, which is name. You have to use the method as a name. Just simply replace ID with name and place the value of the name attribute. Now let's try to run it again. Run as a Java application. So this is our third way now. So link text we have covered, ID is done and name we are doing right now. So total there are eight ways that you can look at. You see guys, because in the application, it is not necessary that ID, always ID will be there or always name will be there, right? Or always it will link text will be there. So based on the HTML, that is from the developer side, right? So what they are adding in that particular tag. So you have to see which is there and which locators you can use at that time. Because every time ID will not be there or every time name will not be there, every time class name, class name will not be there. So you have to see which one is there and which one is the best way to locate that particular web element and it should be unique, right? So you can see guys, it has entered the value in the email text box. So this is the third way that we have covered. And uh, let's see which one is the next link text, ID, name. Let's try another one, which is partial link text. So partial link text, as it is explaining the name from the link text, we will be just taking the partial text, right? not the complete text. So like sign in is there. Instead of taking the complete name, we will take only the partial name. That is only the sign. So based on that, it should locate the element and click on it. See it guys, always remember the method which we are using. If there are more than one locators with the same, but it will always locate the first and perform the action on the first locator. If there are more than one is present there. Okay, guys. So we have to use the method partial link text. So in that we have to pass a text and we are using a sign. We are not using the complete text sign in. We are just using partial value of the link. So that is sign and we are doing a click on it, right? So just close all the browsers and uh, we'll try to run this. So this time we are using partial link text. Just right click on it and run at Java application. 
So just you have to pass some partial value from the tax. Because multi time is can be there because if similar type of tax is there and if you want to locate all those type of uh, anchor links, right? So in that case, you can use that particular uh, locator. So it is loading the URL and we have given the locator for sign in based on the partial text. So it should click on it. Let's wait for the complete load of the web page. We have given the get method guys. So get method will wait until the complete web page gets loaded. It will not go further till complete web page gets fully loaded. That's why we are using a get method. Same thing we can achieve with the help of navigate.2 also. We can load the URL in the browser with the help of navigate.2. But in that case, it will not wait for the page to get fully loaded. Right? So at that time, always use driver.get. So you can see as it has successfully clicked on the sign in link and our sign in page is opened. It has entered the email address in it. So it is running successfully. And this is our fourth way that uh, I have explained with the help of partial link text. Just let me down the line for you for that link also. So that this is link. I will comment out one line link text. Just comment out this line. So we have covered link text, partial link text, ILG, and name, right? Now let's see another locator. So partial this ID name. Let's check with the name of this class name. We will be using class name. So this is a similar way, guys. No, nothing different. Just driver dot find element. by dot class this time you have to use class name and in the class name you have to pass the value of your class right so let's locate one element which is having unique class name so just right click inspect okay if we see this is having some combinations of the uh, values in class so i mean try to avoid this kind of values if uh, to locate if such kind of values are there for the class don't use that those values guys i mean it is not useful and it can be break at any time so it is recommended which is not the combinations of different values so try to use for it so like you can see guys for this particular authentication. This authentication header is there. And uh, for this, they have given the class. You can see this is having H1, this is header. So this is a header tag in HTML and it is having a class name. So this class name is page hyphen heading and it is having the value for authentication, right guys? So we can locate try to use like this if value is there page hyphen heading or something try to avoid such kind of values like class is given for the email address is underscore required space validate space account if spaces are there in that class name please try to avoid that particular locator for that right guys so it is the better if you in this case you can use id you can use a name don't use class in this case right but I want to show you the class. We here you should use the class. So if header is like header is there, in this you can see the class name. There is no ID, there is no name. So you can't locate this web element with the help of a ID, with the help of a name, right? Okay. So how you can locate this web element? You can locate this web element with the help of a class, right? So let's locate this web element this time with the help of a class name. So class name is there and what is the name of it? This is the class name. So what action we can perform on this particular tag? We can get the value of this particular tag and we can verify 
that it is coming as authentication or not so we are on the correct page or not right after clicking on sign in page it is landing on the correct page or not so that thing you can verify in it so for that you have to use a method that is get text get text method you have to use right guys so i will be printing out the value right system dot uh, let's don't print out and take it in a variable string header right so now we will be comparing the value like if it is coming proper or not header dot equal right so what it should be equal to it should be equal to the this value if it will not come equal to this it means we are on the incorrect page and our test case will get fail for that so let's write down now system dot out dot print ln right and what we are going to print now in this message we can print one message that passed right otherwise you will be failing in it now let's try to run the test case guys so this time we are using a class name so we have covered link text we have got partial link text we have covered id we have covered name and this time we are covering with the class name so total five i have covered now three are remaining so i will be covering these three one by one guys please stay with me and watch the complete video i will also give some tips how and which one you should use first locators are very important guys in the selenium seen the project in the company i have seen many employees are struggling with the locators only they are not able to find the proper locators and once they run the test case it will get paid so they always try uh, and struggle to find out the locators in the application because it is very important until you will not find the locators you will not be able to progress on your test case so that's why locators are very important for your ui application if you are automating a ui application and you are using selenium or any other tool definitely you have to locate the web element so locators are very important you have to understand it and guys i will tell you there are multiple plugins are available in the market like fire path and uh, some firebug so many plugins are there but let me tell you guys what is the disadvantage of using that you can't find the dynamic x path from there guys because in the application when you are working on a dynamic values when you are working on a tables so in that case you have to use the dynamic x path and those tools will not provide you the dynamic x path at that time so you have to customize and you have to write down by yourself those customize and dynamic x path those tools will not provide you those tools will give you absolute x path and absolute x paths will fail at any time if there is any change in the application it will get fail at any time guys so that's why i always recommend try manually write down the x path for the locators right guys always try manually don't depend on those plugins those plugins will work for one or one or two uh, web elements but it will not work for all the web elements for others you have to write down by yourself only right if you are working on a table right i know if you have if suppose there is order number is there you have placed an order and order number is every time order number is different so in that case we have to write down an x path so which can pick the dynamically value from there right so you always try to locate the elements manually write down the x path manually for them right so let's move further and you can see guys the class name is working fine for us uh, so our test case is passed and uh, so it has passed the value and it is equal to this authentication and it is passing so we, i have shown you the example for the class name also so how we can use a class name guys 
now let's move forward and discuss the sixth locator in the selenium so now uh, we have left with xpath tag name and the css selector so let's move with the css selector first then i will explain you tag name and the in the last i will explain you about the xpath guys so the css selector is basically it will it will locate the element based on the style property of that particular html tag right guys so what is the syntax actually for the css selector so the syntax for the css selector is guys you have to write down html tag right html tag and here you have to write down attribute equal to value so this is the similar way i mean like the x path but just different it there will be no double slash in well slash like that they will know at the rate and like that like but it will be quick it will be fast you know guys css selector is faster than x path in the ie application you can see application will be first of all slow in the ie after that you are automating it and uh, suppose you are using text box like that so sending a value in a text box in the ie browser is slow so for that and if there is locating element is also slow so it will be very slow in the execution wise so it is always recommended if you are uh, running your application or test case in ie browser you should locate the web elements with the help of a css selector because css selector is faster compared to the xpath so this is the syntax you have to use to locate the css selector with the help of a css selector guys so and you know what is css selector css selector is basically the style property of your html tag so let's do it guys so as we have done for the email address and similar way i will do it for it driver dot find element by dot css selector and in this you have to use the value so which value first of all you have to write down the tag so what was the tag for email input now you have to use id equal to what value it is equal to email right it is equal to email so like that you have to use just comment out this line so we have done the comment for the name now first of all it will click on the sign in link based on the partial link now we are using cls selector and we have to send the values so just copy from here and send this value right so we are using css selector so this is the syntax you can use id you can use a class here so like that you can use for the css selector right guys so let's try to run it and see for the css selector so this is our sixth locator that you can locate a web element in your selenium but guys css selector you can't use every time actually because every time id will not be there every time class will not be there so in that case you have to use the xpar if you are working on a web tables definitely you will be going to write some dynamic x path in it you are you will not be writing the css selector for that but if normal fields are there and you want your execution little bit fast and you are running a test case in i like that in that case you can definitely use the css selector so there is advantage and disadvantage both so yeah but this is the way that you can locate element with the help of a css selector also if there is no other way you can use the css selector also guys it is so fast so you can see it is working fine and it has entered the value in our email address similar way you can use for password you can use for this email address you can use for the button so all is same i'm just showing you example and you can apply in real time example real time project guys suppose what is the real time project we were working working in a Uh, sports cloth company right and they will give you this particular website and they will ask you create a test case for login so you are going to do the same thing no other change in that 
that's why i'm showing you on a website so how you can do this is like the real me you have to do it guys so it is working and pass case is passed for us so this is the css selector that i have shown you you can write it now let's move to the next next locators in the selenium so next locator i will be explaining that tag name so with the help of a tag name like input is a tag name anchor is a tag name right so based on that also you can locate the web elements so how you can do it guys so let's do that also close all the browsers first of all so this is already open we can close this one so guys if you see like h1 is there suppose in this particular html class is not there right so how you will be locating you can locate this element with the help of a h1 tag this one you can locate with the help of a h3 tag this is label you can locate with the help of a label if you want to locate it you can locate it with the help of a label right in the similar way every tag input tag div tag paragraph tag you can locate with the help of a tag name right guys so now suppose guys this is a complete html page and in the page if tag are there it will be always it can be multiple right with the same tag name suppose if you are look uh, see this input tag this input tag it will be multiple time in the web page right like input so you can see it is saying 12 times 12 times it is there in this page this input tag if you are going to locate with the help of a input it will throw you 12 locators with the same uh, tag in the similar way if you are going to use anchor tag it is 58 right and you don't know which one you have to work so you have it will be like a bit difficult which one you have to work so mainly guys anchor tag basically works in those scenarios if we want to locate more than one element more than one web elements suppose if we want to find out all the anchor tags for all the links on a web page right so in that case we can use a tag name and if you want to find out broken links what do you mean by broken link guys broken links means to say there are 100 links on the web page right and you don't know which url is going to incorrect page or uh, giving the server error right many times you can face a server error that it is not uh, redirecting to that particular link right because anchor tag will have a link for with you right so in that case if you want to find out all the broken links you can use a tag name in that case so it will find out all the anchor tags for you and you can uh, after locating all the anchor tags you can see which element is broken for you right so anchor tag is basically useful when you want to locate more than one web element so at that case it is very useful to use a tag name so let's do it guys so i will be showing you for a button and uh, you can see four button tags are there one is for the search second one is for the create an account third one is for the sign in and fourth one is for again this email ad email and email and then you can send it so four four web locator four web elements are there with the name of button tag right so how you can do it how you can locate it guys so let's comment out all these lines and after that i will show so driver dot find element see guys this is the one that i wanted to explain you uh, so that's why i have taken this tag name in the last so like you can see there are two methods find element and find elements if you know very well so if you know that this tag name is only one in the html case you know it will return only one value and you want to locate that with the help of a tag name so in that case you can use a find element but if there are more than one 
web locator web element is there with the tag with that particular tag name so in that case you have to use find elements you don't have to use find element because there are more than one value with same tag name so in that case as you have to use find elements and you can see find elements it it is find all elements within the current is using the given mechanism mechanism means to say you can give x path you can give a like id or you can give a tag name anyway but it is the way if you are locating more than one element so this method is effective by the implicit weight time in fourth at the time of execution and or like yeah so what is the return type of a find elements it is an interview question also guys in the interview they will ask you what is the return type of find elements method and you have to explain that the return type is list of a web element so it will return you a list of all the matching web elements so like that you have to explain guys so you have to use driver dot find elements by dot see guys you can see in the find elements also they have given all the methods to locate the element class name css selector id link text name partial every all the eight methods are there just only difference between find element and find elements is find element will be used for the one find elements used for more than one and if find in the find element if it don't find the element so in that case it will throw an exception no element such found exception and in the case of find elements if no element is found in that case it will return you empty list empty list of web elements there will be no value in it so it will not throw an exception in this case guys so it is very useful also you can locate with the uh, as per the use right so now we are going i am going to show you tag name so you can use tag name and which tag name so i am using a button i want to locate all the web elements who is having the tag as a button okay and after that what i want so i will find out the size what are the total count in it right and i will printing it so i will print the size for you So I will print the size for you guys. So, like you have found all the all the counts in the similar way, you can find all the anchor tags. And after all the anchor tags, you can browse one by one URL. It will be in the list, and you can in the list you can uh, uh, like iterate the list with the help of a index, and you can use the index, and you can go through with all the links, and you can check all the links are opening properly or not. So that's how the anchor uh, this tag name is useful. So let's try to run the test case. Run edge Java application. So this is the seventh seventh way in uh, to find out the web element in the Selenium guys. So this is seventh locator that I'm explaining. Uh, that is tag name. And the last one is the xpath, and xpath is very important guys. So because this will be helpful if there is no ID. if you are not able to locate element with the other seven locator so in that case you have to use the xpath if you have to work on the dynamic xpath so in that case i mean dynamic locator so dynamic web elements so in that case you have to use that particular xpath in it so let's see our task is i think is done so you can see guys so total number of locators i mean the web elements are four who is having the tag name as a button as we have seen manually and you can see this header is test case is passed for us so this is how you can use the tag name and the find elements method right so the our next and the last locator in the selenium is xpath guys so xpath is very important and just stay with me i will be explain this also in the detail so what is that path exactly so suppose guys in the some tags are there some html element or web elements are there they don't have uh, any id or any name and uh, you are not able to locate that particular 
with the help of the remaining seven locators. So like that, in that case, you have to use a X path. And suppose if you want to work on a dynamic value or dynamic web element, so in that case, you, you have to use the X path because value will always be changed there. So dynamically, it will handle with the help of X path only. If you're working with the data tables, so in that case, there will be number of rows, number of columns, and value can be changed uh, in the value uh, in the like tables in the rows in the columns. So you have to use the X path in that case. So multiple times, as you have to use the X path. So that's why and X path. If you are writing dynamic X path, you have to write down. Right. If there are some parent and child HTML and you want to locate it, so at that case with the flowing sibling, preceding siblings. Uh, like parent or child tag. So you have to use the X path in it. So X path is very important. So what is the X path? X path is basically, it is a path till your web element from the root tag, right? From the root tag, it will traverse till your web element. So it will be a complete path for it. So let me show you like, this is a complete web page, guys. And it is starting with the HTML. In the HTML, it is after it, it is having head, right? In the head, it is having some different uh, tags. So if you want to locate any particular web element, so it will be traversed from the HTML tag. So it will be a complete path from the HTML to your web element, right? So this is an X path for you guys. So it will be locating in that way. Now there are two ways of X path guys. So X paths are basically two guys. So let me increase the size of it. So there are two X path, guys, two ways of X path. First of all is absolute X path guys. Okay. So what is absolute X path? Absolute X path will always start from HTML tag, from the root tag, HTML or root tag, right? And in, in this absolute X path, it will be having single slash. It will don't have double slash guys. It will be containing single slash and it will always start from HTML root tag. Okay. And another one is second is the relative X path, guys. Relative X path. So, what is relative X path? Relative X path will start from any tag. It is not dependent on anything and it will not start from the root tag. It will start from any tag. You can start it from import. You can start it from any tag. So anywhere you can start it and it will be having double slash, not the single slash because this is the relative X path. So how you can find the absolute X path and the relative X path. So for that guys, what you have to do so suppose you want to locate this particular email address. Same, same example we will do, okay? So that you don't get confused. So just locate it. So that you can see this particular tag. This is tag for the email address. Just right click on it. Just go the copy and just click on copy full X path. Once you will click on copy full X path, guys, you can see let me show you. This is this is the X path. But this is absolute X path, guys. This is a absolute X path. Absolute X path. Okay. Because it is starting from the HTML tag. So what it will do once you will write it. So how it will locate this particular element? It will locate, it will start from HTML. Then it will go in the body. Then again, it will go in div. Then it will go in the second div. So like that, it will go and it will go for your particular input where it is. So this is a 
absolute x path so in the similar way what is the relative x path so for that what you have to do guys so this is a simple way first of all just locate right click on it go to copy copy x path okay and let's see what is the relative x path so this is for relative x path guys you can see how small it is starting with the double slash and it is having a star you can put it star or you can star means to say it is anywhere or means to say in any tab we have ever id equal to email it don't it will not check for which tag like it is for input tag or it is coming under a anchor tag it is coming under a div it will not check it will check in every tag and wherever it will find that id is equal to email and it will locate that particular web element for you so this is a relative x path guys you can see so now the question so first of all let's run the test case and then i will tell you which uh, x path you should be using absolute x path or a relative x path so let's try one by one and first try with the absolute x path okay so let's do it was copy it paste it here and uh, we have to use x path now so this is the last one that i am explaining locator is x path and uh, yeah so this is an absolute x path that we are using we have given single slash and starting from the html root tag and let's try to run it so that's how you can locate the absolute x path yeah, just you have to right click on it on that particular web element and uh, just copy that absolute x path for that after that i will i have shown you how you how you can take the relative x path also so so guys but in, uh, you can take the relative x path from here but i will advise you always write down manually in the chrome browser x path so it will be very helpful once you will be start writing some dynamic x paths because you can't copy the dynamic x path from here right it will give you just single x path but if you want to locate and there are more than one element that you want to work and those are similar to type of locators so in that case you have to use the dynamic x path and for that you have to write down the manually only so that's why i'm saying so you can see as it is working fine and values entered properly so our other steps are also passed so this is how the absolute x path so let me write it again here so absolute x path this is the absolute x path example that i have shown now we will be try with the relative x path so for that just copy this line okay and here we have to use the x path there is no change in it just the value is getting change x path and uh, this time we are using the relative x path so i have shown you uh, how you can do the copy for the x path and i will show you that uh, how you can write the manually also so for that guys first of all i will show you manually i have shown you how you can do with the help of a right click and you can inspect it so for that first of all you have to locate that particular element once it's located you can see it is having the input tag you can write it down the star also if you will write it star so it means it will check in all the tags either it is a input tag or it is a anchor tag or a div tag it will check everywhere otherwise you can write as a input also so it will check in all the input tags now it will not check in all the tags so there are total input tags 12 so it will check in all the 12 tags what it will check the condition what condition you have given so you can give input or you can give as a star so what is the advantage and disadvantage of it so if you will really give the input and tomorrow suppose that tag name is changed but the value is same for that 
so in that case it will fail but if you will give star if you will give star so in that case if tag name is changed for that particular web element but value is still there in that condition that value is still there attribute value is still there so in that case still our x path will work and it will not get breakdown it will not uh, be incorrect x path for you so you can always use as a star guys so it will uh, decrease the maintenance work for your test cases for your page objects so let's so guys how you have to write the x path so x path you can write id name any particular there are different ways first of all you can locate and you can add the condition based on the attributes based on you can also uh, add the values uh, like the text values so like that you can mention uh, right on the x path on it and there are different methods and different operators are also there based on that you can write down the x path so i will explaining all those methods uh, in that x path so first of all let's try to locate with the help of a attribute so you can write it with the name of your id also so what you have to do you have to write down at the rate id equal to single columns and you have to give the value for it you can see guys this is an x path and it is locating and always remember guys whenever you are locating the count should be one one of one right the count should be one of one if count is coming two it means that x path is not the unique you have to always locate the unique x path okay so like this this is an x path you can also locate it with the name of a name also name right see you can see guys now two two locators are there with the same x path one two one two so this is not the unique suppose tomorrow you want to work on this newsletter you want to enter this email address and you have written this particular x path will it work it will not work guys what it will do with the first occurrence first occurrence or the first matching is for the email address so it will go and it will address and it will enter this email address in this particular text box but we want to enter value in this so how you will do you have to write down the unique x path so id is unique so in that case you can write down id this is unique so this will be locating this particular web element right or maybe you can use some any other uh, web elements also like this data validation is there you can locate based on this attribute also and what is the value of it is mail right but th this is also again to so this is also not giving a unique x path right so what you can do in that case you can give the indexing guys so just close and then open the square bracket give as a two because this is our second just go to home and open this like that see you can also use the indexing and suppose this same kind of indexing you want to use in the cases dynamically suppose sometimes you want to pass here one sometimes you want to pass here two so what you will do and this is dynamically so at that case at that time you have to use the dynamic x path right so that's why i'm saying always try and always write the manual x path so that it will be useful for you so we are locating it you can use this x path this is a relative x path i'm using double slash so let's use this x path okay this is a relative x path guys now let's try to run it we can close this browser otherwise we will get confused so guys always write down the x path manually i will always recommend it because i have seen in my team also they are not able to write down the dynamic x path they know how to write down for id name class but they don't know exactly how to locate the element with the help of a dynamic x path and they always confuse in that they do they are not able to apply proper logic in that they are not able to apply the loop in the dynamic x path so definitely challenge will be there if you will not practice by yourself you have to practice it guys 
So you can see it, guys, it is working fine, this X path, and we are locating it is working fine. So our test case is passed, right? So now you must be saying, so which X path we should use? We should use absolute X path or we should use relative X path. So guys, always try to use the relative X path because X, this absolute X path is traversing from the HTML tags. Both, see in the application, there is always new updation comes, new features is always coming. And there is always a change in their HTML structure, in HTML page structure, guys. Suppose tomorrow, today it is dev 3, but tomorrow it can be dev 2. It can be a 1 also. Tomorrow it is a 2. Tomorrow it can be 4, right? So it is always dynamic because changes are happening in HTML page every day, introducing new features, uh, like fixing the new bugs. So, this HTML day DOM is always changing, guys. If anything will change, your X path will not work in that time. But if you are writing the app, relative X path, so I have written the uh, X, relative X path, it will not matter where it is in the uh, complete web page. Wherever it will be, it will find out that because it is the relative, it is not the absolute. So always try to use the relative X path because it will, there will be less chance of failing that and it, it will always be find out and there will be less maintenance in that case. So always use relative X path. Okay, guys. So that's how you have to use the relative X path, guys. So I have shown you all the eight different locators in Selenium one by one. And uh, so I will just give you some tips that uh, which one you should locate the first. So always guys, if there is a unique, unique ID is there and you are able to locate that particular web element uniquely with the help of a ID. So always use the ID. First of all, try to use ID. If it is not unique, but name is unique, always try to use after that your name. First try to locate with the help of a ID. If it is there uniquely, it is identifying. If it is not, then try with the name, right? first ID, name, after that you can try with class name. But most of the time guys, I have seen class name uh, will not be uniquely, unique most time. It will be different, right? So ID, after that name, after that try to use the tag name. After that guys, you can, if there is a link, always try to use with the link text. Link text is very useful because link text name or value will always be different on the web page. Guys, because see, like I will show you, like contact us, sign in, these all are anchor links. You can see my orders, my credit slips, my address. These values will always be different. Same will not be there. Why they will show, uh, different uh, uh, values with the same, I mean the same with the same name, different things with the same name, right? It will be unique. So partial, uh, this link text definitely you can use guys. This link text you can use, it is useful because it will give you unique value. So after that, if you're working on like I browser, try to use uh, CSS selector for that. Don't try to use XPath. XPath will take time in the I browser but CSS selector will be very fast in iBrowser, browser, guys. After that, you try to use XPath, right? If you're not able to use any other locators, try to use XPath after that. But firstly, try with ID, name, link text, and then you can go with the XPath, guys. So yeah, thanks. That's it, guys, about the different locators in Selenium. I know it's a bit uh, long video but stay with me and it is very helpful and it will help you in the interview also they will ask you different questions in it and i have explained in my video also and uh, in my coming videos i will explain you about the different methods or different operators in xpath and after that i will explain you about the dynamic xpath also and after that i will explain about the tables how you can work around the tables with the dynamic xpaths so please stay with me and like my videos, like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And if you like it, please share with your friends and colleagues also. So thanks to everyone. Thank you all. Bye.